and welcome back to the Scoundrelling Cafe and welcome to what's always an exciting video. It's part one of the new project and it's this, the Edward BF109F in 172nd scale. Now, as is tradition for my part one videos, what I'm going to be doing in a moment is taking you through uh, some of the aftermarket bits that I've got for this kit and uh, I haven't actually decided what markings I'm going to do, but I've kind of narrowed it down a bit, so I'll take you through that, and also what I'm kind of hoping to achieve with the model. Right, first off though, let's open the box and have a look at some of the aftermarket bits that I've got. Um, I'm hoping that you've seen the sprue tour already, so you know exactly what's in the box, and I did actually do a little mini review on each of the brassing bits in there, um, and uh, on the project, as we go forward, you'll be able to make your own mind up. Is it worth splashing out the few quid for those brassing bits? But there we go. Right, so there's the instruction booklet. I'll keep that separate because that's got the markings in, or some of them. Um, right, there's the plastic. Right, some of the aftermarket bits then, in no particular order. I've got a set of gear bays. Now in the kit, they're also one piece gear bays. They're also got the hollow um, the hollow bits where the oleo lies, which is a really nice touch. But these do have more detail. So on the real aeroplane, there are various pipes and bits and bobs sort of behind the openings that you can see. This has them, the kit doesn't. And the bit around where the sort of wheel would sit, if you like, is more detailed as well. So I've got one set of those. I should say, um, did I say that already? I can't remember, mine's going. Um, I am gonna be doing one from the box and one throwing all these bits at it. Um, I'll only be videoing the ones using all the bits, not the straight from the box one. And then um, at the end, we can have a bit of a wash up and see whether it was worth it. Spinner, the difference of this compared to the kit parts is the propeller blades are separate and the uh, uh, propeller boss is molded integral with the spinner back plate. The advantage of that is you can um, paint the spinner separately and then just slot the propeller blades in, which is a really nice touch because this bit on the propeller boss is obviously silver, the cuffs, the pitch change mechanism, uh, and the blades are completely separate, so you don't have any sort of tricky masking or hand baiting the silver bits and then getting a blob of silver on your prop blade. So that's one of the advantages. Um, the way it's molded, as you uh, would have seen in the sprue tour, is that the holes in the boss are square, and obviously the mounting lugs are square on the blades, and that's going to set the angle of the propeller blades perfectly. The other thing about this set is you do get the end of the cannon barrel which slots into a hole in the front of the spinner boss so that sets that length um, perfectly so you just don't have a hole looking through um, the spinner. So that's the advantage of that. Whether it's worth the money or not, time will tell. The other brassing set I've got are these uh, set of exhausts. The advantage of this over the kit is these are hollow, the kit ones are solid, but these on the 109, they're kind of buried quite far in. And the the you do get the bit of photo wedge that sort of goes over the top. Um, I would say if you're gonna if you're waiting for the weekend or you've got some over trees, then these would be really good because you um, you do get that sort of brass bit of the shield, which you won't get in the kit, or at least there'll be plastic in the kit and quite chunky. So I got those. Right, what else have I got? Here we go. Uh, I have a set of master barrels. Brassin do a replacement set for the um, the cannons, or sorry, the machine guns in the nose, but um, I couldn't get a hold of it. It wasn't in stock, which is a real shame. So I've ended up getting these um, the brass ones instead. I think they might be a little bit tricky to. Um, to install because you need to get them at the right angle and they're very easily deflected 
at a weird angle. So um, yeah, that, that might be a little bit tricky. But you also get the pito. So what I'm gonna do is obviously not use the kit one because um, you know, it is really you know, thick as your arm um, in scale. But um, yeah, using the pito as well. So that's gonna be cool. The other bit of aftermarket um, for the kit itself, are these Barracuda cast, uh, the mass balances for the ailerons. Now the kit ones, you do get spares in the kit. You do get four on the sprue, um, but the, the they're essentially almost a butt joint. The locating pin is just minute and the hole is minute. These are molded with a plug, so you actually drill out the same diameter as the plug, um, so they are a lot stronger. And that's quite important, you know, if the model's just going to sit on the shelf, then fair enough. But I've got to get mine back uh, in the hold of the aeroplane, and if you're going to take your models to your model club or a show or a competition or something, then I highly recommend these. They're great. Right, that's it for sort of resin and plastic. The other bit I've got is I've got this sheet uh, here, which is from Extra Decal, it's Meshmit BF109 Stab Part Two. This has schemes from the E all the way through to the K. And I've got the instructions uh, here. What is the kit instructions? Right, kit instructions here. I'll talk about the kit options first. There's lots of them. as a, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K, L, M, N. 19 schemes? That can't be right. Um, uh, let's count them right. 1, 2, 3, 5, 7, 9, 11, 13. There's 14. Oh yeah, that is 14, isn't it? <laughs> I don't know where we've got 19 from, can't count. Right, so there's 14 schemes in here. Um, some really interesting ones, some quite bland ones, I think. For example, Blandy McBland Face. All right, it's Marseille's aeroplane, but it's all over brown, single colour. Um, so obviously I shan't be doing that one. There are a couple of schemes that do kind of appeal, though. Uh, the one that really leaps out, and I've done this in 48 scale before, is Herman Graff's. This one's got obviously got the yellow nose, the yellow spinner, yellow bits on the tail. The only, uh, and, and the wingtips, quite wide, obviously eastern front markings. The only thing that I kind of shy away from with this one is on the kit decal sheets, the yellow's quite washed out, actually. And am I going to be able to match the decal to the paint I'm going to use? Because RLM04 is quite sort of it's quite a strong yellow uh, it's kind of not orange but uh, there is you know it's it's not a lemony yellow so I don't really know how that's going to um, play out so maybe I'll do that one I'm not entirely sure if I don't then the other one I'm going to do is um, Hans Eckhart Boss from JG54 again I've done this in 48 scale and uh, I am going to do, one of them is definitely going to be winter whitewash. A few people have asked for a winter whitewash. And so I'm going to do the winter whitewash on one of them. So it's either going to be Hans Eckard Bobs, if I can stop it from shining, there. Or it's going to be Hans Phillip. Um, so that's, is that an F2 or an F4? Right, so Bobs is an F2. Hans Phillips is an F4. It's this one at the top here. That is all over, all over white, uh, but it's got the green heart um, going on, and it's got uh, some yellow for the eastern front markings, but obviously nowhere near as much as um, Bob's there. The other one uh, is here, which I really like. It's got the yellow nose as well with a white spinner. Uh, again from JG54, but it's got. It looks like it's got some kind of RLMO2 overspray on top of that, maybe. Um, or it's just a little bit more patchy. So that's actually really quite an interesting scheme. Also is the one above it. So that's an F4 as well. The one above it is an F2 from Saint-Omer in France. 
JG53, this has got a uh, yellow spinner, yellow nose, but the yellow extends all the way to the windscreen on that top decking bit. So that's really interesting as well. So I'm, I really don't know. I might just see what I can cobble together uh, and I might do a different one entirely, but I want one with a yellow nose, I want one with winter whitewash, and I want one with mottling down the fuselage sides. That's the kind of requirements, and I need to get two models out of that. Well, obviously, one's going to have um, the whitewash is going to cover up the mottling. So the, the mottling one, maybe have yellow nose, maybe not. But it would be nice to have one with a yellow nose because that's a bit of a feature of kind of early 109s, isn't it? There we are. I don't know. That's going to be another cross up bridge when we come to it. Although what I will say is the winter whitewash will be the one straight from the box because I will do that with the canopy closed. And I think it'd just be easier to, um, it could even just leave that off completely. And then once it's painted and weathered, stick the canopy on because the framing was not painted. There we go. Right. Uh, excuse me. Really excited to start clipping bits um, off the sprue. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that right now. Uh, and it'd be interesting to see what schemes I eventually do. So there we are. So uh, yeah, I'll see you in part two for the cockpit. Cheers, bye-bye.